Hey there, welcome to day six. And this one, we're gonna be talking about string formatting and F strings. Before we get started, I wanted to mention our repo has a lot of really good reference for this stuff. Cause we're not gonna go through all of it because there's just a lot. So if you go to github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs slash 30 days of Python, navigate into the tutorial reference into day six and click on that file here, day six string formatting and F strings. This is a really easy to use guide on how to actually work with all of these different strings. And I'll link a bunch of references here to learn more about them as well. But the gist is this, let's go ahead and jump into Python 3. And I wanna go ahead and say, I wanna say, hello, Justin, this is cool. Okay, but I don't want it to say Justin, I want it to say, anything there instead of Justin. So to do this, we use something called F strings. So we'll go ahead and say hello, and we'll say name, this is cool, right? So notice that I have these curly brackets here and then some arbitrary variable name, right? So that's an arbitrary variable there. Um, and hopefully it's not cool, but cool. And then I hit enter, I get this name error name is not defined. Now this is similar to if I just printed out name and I never defined it, defined it. Name equals to Justin. And now if I press up a couple times, now it actually does that string replacement. And since we know how to loop through things, I can say something like names equals to J A E or something like that, you know, whatever that is, F for name and names. Now I can go ahead and use that string substitution with the print statement. And just remember that the F goes in front of the string, just like that. And then we can say, hello, you know, whatever argument we're gonna be passing through in there. And then there is that very basic string substitution. And that allows me to format messages. So if you were running an e-commerce application and you wanted to send a confirmation email, this would be a way to do it. You could replace it with any sort of value in there. But the part of this that might not be clear yet is how do I actually turn it into this long, longer message? So what you can do is say message equals to hi there, and then you can add additional items to it. This is cool. the end, right? So MSG, there it is. So what that means is then I can say MSG equals to this blank item here, and then I'll say for I in names. Then I'll say MSG plus equals to the F string of name and then I. Let's make sure we close it off correctly. There we go. And then I can print out MSG or the message. And it's like bringing all those together. I mean, that looks terrible, but notice that what I'm essentially doing here is I'm looping through all of those names and then just adding it to that original string. So it, it's giving me <laughs> name J, name A, and then name E. Okay, so uh, something, it's something. But what we really wanna be able to do is have a template of sorts that I can replace them as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and say template equals to, and I'm gonna use triple strings here. So what triple strings do is they allow me to write multiple lines of some sort of text inside of Python. So I can say hello there, comma, I can hit enter, and I can use those variables again. So name, this is an amazing way to do sub subbing my cool items. And then triple string or triple quotes again. It can be single quotes, it can be double quotes. And now we hit enter and I can print out what that template is. And it will actually show me that, hey, there's my template and I can replace that data somehow. Now, of course, I didn't actually replace it with anything because, well, I didn't set it up with an F string. So this is part of the limitations of using F strings is that, hey, I'm, I have a, a template here, but I'm not able to actually change what that variable is. 
So what we can actually do is use something called format. So dot format on any string, you can replace things. So I can say name equals to J and hit enter. And that actually will replace whatever this item is. Now, right off the bat, you're like, well, what are these slash ends? What's that doing in there? We'll talk about that in a second. But if I printed out that formatted message, oops, let's try that again. Print out the actual template format. I'm gonna copy that piece, hit enter. And there we go. So that, that actually prints it out in a way that you might have expected. Now, when we go to format strings, there's something called a slash in. This means a new line. So it only really comes up when you, by default, it only comes up when you use it in a print statement. It will actually print out a new line for you. It's, a, it's like a line break, if you will. It's just, you have to declare it explicitly when you are writing out your strings unless you want it to actually look like this. And that's what those multiple lines do. So if I do one, two, three, hello, and then press enter another, I will see a slash in in there, right? Now, if I wanted to get rid of that in or that slash in, I can just say, well, let's go ahead and just grab that string here. I'll, I'll actually write it out this time. And then I can do this call replace where I can replace that slash in with an empty string or with any value. So the value that I want to replace and then what I want to replace it with, I hit enter and now it says hello another. It actually replaced that. So again, if I put it in as a space, there it is. Now, if you're familiar with HTML, then perhaps you would put it in as a break tag, right? So strings have a very robust way built into Python to do stuff like replacement, of actual values of items and then formatting of various contextual items that we want to have too, right? So that allows me to reuse this template over and over again. Now, of course, we don't have to use multiple uh, line strings like these triple quotes here. We can actually do that same thing with a single line and have it stay a single line. So let's go ahead and see what I mean by that. If I say hello, and then do, I'm gonna leave that space in there and then do a slash, hit enter. This is another line or is it? And then hit that quote and now hit enter. Now it's just one line. So what this does is it, it quote unquote escapes that enter. If I try to do that without that slash, I hit enter here, I get this error. This is a syntax error. This is one of those spacing things. Python is crazy, it's about spacing. This is an example of that. Now, by and large though, when it comes to working with strings, whenever you open a string, you wanna make sure you close it. And if you're not closing it, then you wanna have a good reason as to why, which is why this slash allows you to escape that closing. It allows you to, to go to the next line. And if we still don't do it, like if I hit enter here, what's gonna happen? Yes, we get a syntax error as expected. Now, you might be like, well, what if I need to use a slash like that? What if I need to have like HTTP colon slash slash, this is awesome. What's gonna happen here, right? Now, it doesn't do much with that string, but what if I went ahead and printed that out? Hey, I'm missing a slash in here. What's going on? Well, this is when we actually need to use two slashes to escape the other slash. So right here, this is called escaping that enter. And so our print statement there, what we just need to do is add two slashes here, we hit enter, and now it actually does it. So whenever you see two slashes like that, that means it's going to go ahead and only have one slash inside of a Python string printed statement. Because again, uh, if I said HTTP colon slash uh, slash slash, this is cool. Um, yeah, that's the wrong <laughs> wrong direction for slashes, but you know, whatever. Uh, hello world, right? So that's a string that I can move around regardless of what direction these slashes are. It's really just when we do that print statement that it makes a big difference. Because if I print it out, then those slashes go away. Um, and that's just one of those formatting things that you just need to be aware of. Now, the next thing that we should be aware of is how these curly brackets work. So sometimes we have a template that says, you know, name is cool, right? So here's our template. 
Um, but I want to include some brackets here. And if I did format, well, I could say name equals to Justin. And then, oops, let's go ahead and make sure we're using the same kind of quotes here, unlike we did there. Now we get this replacement error um, or this replacement index zero is out of position. So that's because of a couple things. One of them being that I actually have these curly brackets as an empty replacement. So that sort of requires me to say something like ABC, right? And that will actually change what that template value is to ABC. But again, I actually wanted those curly brackets in there. I didn't want it to be replaced. So to replace them, I just need to use double curly brackets and now my template has those double cur or those curly brackets in there um, and these are just little tricks and tips that you have to just get used to doing as you start using python a lot more uh, but really that's the gist of the string substitution i want to just say that the main thing here that i use all the time now is f strings just like this i, I mean I, I use this all the time right so that, that F string means that it just makes it nice and easy to do this, to remove whatever that variable is and replace it with the one that I'm looking for. But every once in a while, you do need to use this formatting. Now the formatting actually comes up a lot more with numbers than it does with strings. With just pure old strings, this is super simple. But when it comes to numbers, let's say for instance like pi 3.14, I don't know the rest. I'll just go ahead and give some number like that. Um, I'll just give pi here. I'll set it equal to the variable of pi. The F string can still actually show me pi, right? So if I did this, it shows me that entire number. But what if I only wanna have 3.14? This is where formatting comes in and makes a huge difference, okay? So that's, that's the uh, gist of how we're gonna do this. So if I do pi here, it shows me 3.14 still, so that's a one-to-one -one replacement. But if I actually want it to be down to, let's say, for instance, two digits, what we have to do is use something called a float. So if I do it like that, still the same, it's treated as a float number, which is also true if I put in a whole number, it actually would treat it as a float number as well. But this doesn't help me with the decimals. So to actually do the decimals, I scroll up a little bit, I put a period here and then the number of decimals that I wanna have, which is 0.2, we hit enter and that's 3.15. It actually rounds up for us to the nearest decimal based off of the places that we set here. So if I come in and do four, there we go. So uh, I'm gonna pause for a second and just show you that all of this stuff is on this day six formatting guide, right? It's also showing you a different method that's in there as well. Uh, but the actual format method is the first one that you'll see. You see the positional ones, the keyword ones, uh, positional and keyword, even using a dictionary and how you would go about using that. And then numbers and integers, these are the things that we're going through right now. Uh, and there's the actual value of pi. But there's one more thing that I wanna do before we leave this formatting part. And that is going back to F strings in combination with the built-in method for format. That is that Python, I can call format at any time, right? So if I wanted to call format of pi, by default, it's gonna go to here, right? So if I called format of pi, and then let's say for instance, we wanted to do the dot to f like that and hit enter, it actually does reformat that number into a string. It's no longer just a float, right? So pi is a float if I did pi times whatever, it's gonna run it, where if I did the format times, let's say three, it just repeats that string three times. So um, format can be used in other places. That's the point of that, uh, which means that in my F strings, I can use it as well. So I can come in here, there's the, the baseline for the F string, I can use pi, or I can actually pass in format and then point to or let's use single quotes here and do point to F parentheses, enter. And there is some of that logic that's right inside of the format uh, call or the F string replacement. Um, so in this case, you know, you may do something like that. You may not. 
Um, it's it's really much, it makes more sense to do this outside of that and ha hold the logic outside of the F string. But it is nice to know that inside of F strings, you can do all sorts of logic. And of course, format is just a built-in function that Python has. Soon we'll learn about functions so you can actually call your own functions inside of that format or that F string as well, if it ever came to that. Um, so that's strings substitution, string formatting and F strings. F strings are in Python 3.6 and above. So if for some reason you see Python 3.5 and you're getting errors related to it, well, it's because F strings don't, don't exist in there. Anyways, that's day six. Um, next, what we need to do is actually start using functions. Now, this should be some of the fundamental things pretty much all wrapped up. Now, once we have functions and classes, we can actually start to build actual programs. But we need to know some of this underlying you know, structure and syntax prior to being able to really, really do some cool stuff in Python. So stay with us for day seven.